Hey ladies, I am really excited to be here with you today sharing some of my insights and thoughts on my coaching experience so far. So a little bit about me, my name is Elika first and foremost. I have been with the Warrior Women team as a participant in a like challenger since April of 2018, I believe. Looked at those dates before I popped on here and uh, quickly became a discount coach after I completed my first challenge and began playing with the idea of becoming a more active coach. Talked with Jenny a couple times and facilitated my first challenge group of March of 2019. So I have, uh, it's just been under a year since I've been like an active coach, a really active coach. And it's been amazing the growth that I have made just in the past 10 months has been like mind blowing. I didn't realize, honestly, again, like I said, I just looked at these dates for this video and I didn't realize it hadn't even been a year yet. So I feel really good about where I'm at, where I've come and where I am going. I've got a lot of stuff in the hopper for 2020. So I'm really, really excited about that. So like I said, my name is Elika. So background about me, I have a formal education in social work and school counseling. I did, you know, those professions in the mental health field for about 10 years. I always have been driven to support and help people and counseling was a, an avenue I did that in for quite some time. I grew up overweight and fairly unhealthy and, um, you know, in my early 20s had some lifestyle changes, which is a whole nother story and video and segment, but we won't get into that. Um, so I, you know, have lost weight maybe 50 or 60 pounds at this point. I'm not super sure. I don't really weigh myself, to be honest. Um, but I've grown and learned so much and I'm much living a much healthier lifestyle than I was then. I used to be a smoker and I still drank beer, but I you know, used to drink quite a bit more and all that stuff. So that's some of my personal background. Um, as far as the health and wellness piece, how I came to Beachbody, um, like I mentioned, I was formerly overweight and lived an unhealthy lifestyle. I began running um, 5K events and grew from there, did some 10Ks, half marathons, full marathon, triathlons, duathlons, uh, really got into that aspect of uh, physical fitness for quite, some, quite a few years and I really enjoyed it. I liked um, signing up for things, following a training schedule and competing, you know, doing the event and being done. It was, uh, it's really good for me how my mind works with just kind of signing up for things and making them happen. So uh, eventually my body couldn't handle the running anymore. It's really not great on your knees and your back and everything. Um, so that's one of the reasons that Beachbody was, you know, really attractive to me is because the challenges are really similar to like signing up for a program, like an event where you just sign up for and you're doing X number of workouts for X number of times. So just mentally it really was the same for me and really helped uh, me transition and continue that healthy lifestyle after I couldn't run anymore just because it was not good on my body. So um, how I found Beachbody specifically is through my sister actually. She joined Jenny's team before I did, uh, told me about her and just said, hey, you should follow her. I was doing all this other physical fitness stuff at the time and I was like, sure. So I did, liked her stuff, thought she was great. I believe they were in, just had just maybe moved to Texas at the time I'd started following them. Um, she reached out to me at one point, asked if I was interested, and I was like, hey, I love the stuff you're doing. I'm not, you know, I've got this other, uh, these events and activities going on that I'm really invested in, so Beachbody's not for me right now, but I could see myself getting into it in the future. You know, fast forward a year or whatever, and um, the, those body physical pains and issues I was having with my back and my knees, and it was the time. So I reached out and got that ball rolling, and here we are, years later, um, an active coach and really loving the community that I'm in and the community that I'm building with my challengers now. So that is how I have some of my background and how I have um, come to Beachbody. Uh, one of the, oh, why am I still in Beachbody? So a couple I just wanted to point out um, is that it works. I, if, it, if you work, it works. Um, like I mentioned, I have done some bigger running events and races and things. And with that, I, I put in a lot of training time, a lot of running uh, or biking or swimming or whatever, hours a day sometimes, depending on the event. Um, and it, you know, kept me in shape and on and, um, feeling physically fit and everything. 
These Beachbody programs are 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on what program and workout you're doing. Um, and I'm getting even better um, results from a physical fitness perspective, typically. Nutrition, obviously, is a big piece. Um, so it works. If you work, it works. And the other big piece that I um, really love about Beachbody that I didn't expect is the community feel. The friends that I have made, the connections that have um, grown has been just like astonishing. Um, so those are the reasons that I continue to stick around and that I believe that I believe so much in this um, product and in this com this community is because of the positivity that I have had from it. I am, like I mentioned, building a really great community of um, women challengers and hopeful, hopeful coaches uh, in the future myself. And I know that none of that would have happened without, you know, the structure that Beachbody has provided for coaches like Jenny and other, all these other wonderful coaches out there supporting women and showing them about healthy living. It's amazing. I love it. Yay. Um, so with my counseling background and my social work background, it's a huge help for me. Um, I draw on that a lot, those experiences and that knowledge and the training to help um, guide and support my challengers. So some of the, um, something I want you to also do, so these are some big takeaways that I want to share with you is, so the first thing is to find your niche and to grow it. So with the yogic practice that I have and training, with the counseling practice that I have, I am really focusing on um, making sure that women are getting to know themselves and what they really want and not to try to like meet goals and burn calories and uh, have this super intense thing. You know, for me, the approach that I'm bringing to my community and my group is we're gonna meet you, meet you where you're at, let's figure that out and let's grow from there. So that's kind of, that's my niche. That's my, my vibe and my brand, you know, something that I am really beginning to figure out and hone and develop and grow. So that um, is going to help you build your passion. The more that you know about yourself and what you're into, the more passionate you're going to be about it and the more passionate your challengers and the people around you are going to be about it. And you're going to attract people with the similar, um, you know, viewpoints on things and interests and commonalities and like-mindedness. So find your niche. It will help you build and grow your passion. Um, pull personal experience into creating positive habits and supported, supporting healthy living as well. The more that you can connect it with re your personal real life and how it might apply to other people's real life, the more they're going to be able to really understand it, resonate it, resonate with it and see it and apply it. So um, in finding your niche, make sure that you are not just, you know, showing up that way for your workout videos and you're doing your shakes or your nutrition or whatever, but in all aspects of your day in life. Another big takeaway that I continue to grow and develop with is to be yourself and be super comfortable with yourself and to do it the sooner the better um, because that's how you're going to build the community, just like finding your niche, getting comfortable with yourself. Uh, and how we do that is through a lot of different things, um, through patience. You have to like give yourself time and grace, okay? You can't expect yourself to be where somebody is that's been doing this stuff for a year, two, three, five years. Because people have been doing this for five, ten years. And those are the people you're seeing online. You'll get there eventually. You can't compare yourself to that now. So be patient. You will feel like you're doing... Um, things wrong sometimes and you'll be like, what the fuck am I doing? Nobody is liking this. Nobody's following me. Nobody's posting. Just keep going. Okay. Keep going. You are on the right track. You have to keep going. The difference between people who fail and who succeed are that the people who succeed just keep going. Everybody encounters failure. It's just a matter of whether you stop or whether you persevere. So um, be patient with yourself. Put the stuff out there. You're gonna feel like you're not knowing, like you're not doing things right. You know what you're doing. You're on the right track. Just keep going with it, okay? Um, you'll hear Jenny say this a lot, and uh, you know, I say I say things a lot that really resonate, and this always resonated with me. Of people who are um, on your team don't have to have don't don't have to be on your team. They are with you because they like you and they really um, connect and resonate with you. So 
they could be with no coach at all or any other coach. So don't doubt yourself. The people that are there want to be there. And if somebody leaves, that's okay. Don't take it personal. It's not about you. It's about them. And wish them well. Hope that they find their vibe and their tribe and the people that they can connect with and grow with. Because there are plenty of people out there who will connect and grow with you. They will get there. Okay? So people will come and go. Don't take anything personal. If people don't want to be a part of it, it's a okay. Um, and another big takeaway that I want you to um, keep in mind through this journey of coaching is personal development is a must. You have to develop yourself personally. So whether that's reading books, watching videos, listening to videos, um, attending seminars, taking classes, whatever it might be, if you are not personally developing and growing yourself, you cannot personally develop and grow other people. So. So get yourself in check, girl. Make that happen. Figure out the best modality for you and make a schedule, commit to it. Um, the final big picture takeaway I want to give you before I send you on your way into the new journey of coaching, a new adventure of coaching, is um, to do a middo and a maddo. So middo is minimum daily output and maddo is maximum daily output. This is something that I learned from some other top beach body coaches on some calls that I've watched. Um, you need to decide for you what your minimum daily output is gonna be to help grow your business and make it successful. So for example, my minimum daily output is to do send like five invites, drink my water, meditate, post, um, and work out. So those are my minimum daily outputs. Those things are non-negotiables and they're happening every day. And I air quote every day because they don't happen every day. And you know what? It's okay. <laughs> my shit still grows. Not as fast as it would if I did all this plus them every day. But this is, you know, write this. They're right here in front of me, literally on a post-it. You have to write these down in a place that you'll see them every day. And you have to practice them. And you have to note when you do them. You know, note it in your journal or in your um, agenda if you did your middo for the day or not, and then keep track. If you did, you know, maybe look back and, wow, in January, I did my minimum daily outputs 20 out of 30 days, and my business grew a lot. And I look in December, and I only did five, and my business didn't grow at all. So it also helps you give, uh, gives you some, some data to go back and look at as well. So, and with the maximum daily output, this is just kind of a, a big picture ideal list almost of if you have a weekend or a day where you don't have anything else going on and you can just commit a lot of time to coaching, what would your big picture maximum daily output look like? And this just helps to give some framework for you because what I have found in my coaching is that when I have time to work on stuff, there's so much stuff to work on, it can be a little overwhelming and I'm like, where do I start? How much time do I invest in doing this thing or that thing? So it can be a little overwhelming and then you kind of like, or I kind of freeze sometimes. So. Having those lists, the minimums and the maximums can help at least give that framework and guideline of what you need to get done to stay on track with your coaching business. So that's all I have for you. I hope that what I have shared with you helps or at least gives some insight. If you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. Like I said, I'm Elika, connected on the Warrior Women team, um, or reach out to Jenny or any of these awesome coaches on the Warrior Women team. We are all on the same page, like-minded, in it to win it, just to support each other and watch everybody grow. So congratulations on making this decision and joining us. And I cannot wait to see you online soon.